Hello everybody, this is Robbie from Audifier. In this video we are going to do a little experiment. We received a question uh, which was like, what if I was using um, sequitur with just MIDI files, MIDI files of different instruments? So we tried to put sequitur to the test and see how it responds. For example, let's assume we have here a bass line. This is a very simple electronic bass line and uh, we are using a bass from uh, Logic. So it sounds like this. Okay, we are just going to load up um, a bass here in Sequitur. Um, let's see, electronic, um, oh, bass sequel. If I play Sequitur on its own, using its uh, phrases engine, sounds like this. So there is like just a rhythm going on, like a pulse, but syncopated. This is the ideal situation because basically what Sequitur will do, we just use the MIDI notes in this uh, MIDI file and uh, use them as uh, triggers for the sequence that is programmed here in Sequitur. So uh, let's just move this MIDI file over here and let's see what happens. So basically, a sequitur is just adding this kind of rhythm which is programmed. At this point, since in the MIDI file the bass notes are just happening in different points of the bar, sequitur will trigger every time the phrase from the beginning, but if we are using the legato mode, which we trigger again with this uh, key switch over here, hope you can see it. So now legato on, legato off, legato on, legato off. Let's play. So what happens here is that the phrase continues no matter what, even though the notes here are changing. So if you just take a look at how here Secretary is behaving. Um, you see that the phrase is continuing from uh, the start to the finish. If legato was off, and let's put it off with this key switch. You see, instead, it's just triggering back and forth. Okay, this was just um, a very easy one. Uh, even if we were just to use uh, a different patch from uh, Sequitur, since there is only one note at a time and it's quite a linear kind of phrase, it shouldn't create any problems. So let's just take even a very fast one. Now, one thing to remember is that the notes here are in C major, so actually we should set a sequitur in C major as well. Oh, one thing we could do is just to play both of them at the same time. You see that actually it's, it's doing quite a good job. Okay, let's try instead with a MIDI file which is more like of a pad sound, so sustained notes and different chords. We are still using um, ES2 from Logic, and uh, let's see how it sounds on its own. Okay, quite a deep pad. Uh, let's select something a little bit more complicated, like, uh, yeah. This is a cello viola pattern. Um, 
Let's move the MIDI file up to circuit or track. And of course we could also um, change the phrases in the middle and see what happens. So, uh, it is still kind of working. Let's put it together with the pad and see if they work together. Um, let's try a different experiment. Now we have a piano part here and it's again from uh, Logic, Logic on Piano. Sounds like this. Okay, so this is going to be quite challenging. Let's go back to the easier way, which is uh, base sequel. Uh, let's put the MIDI up. Of course, I mean, as it happened before, is sequitur is just uh, kind of doing this pulse, this kind of rhythm um, over the chords that the piano was playing. If we were to play both of them together, so we put back the, the track of the piano over there. So we have piano here, real piano here, and sequitur there. So let's see what happens. Okay, uh, let's put Sequito to the test. Let's go back to those violins we had before, for example. Okay, should be fine. Um, let's see, let's take away the piano for a sec, and let's see what happens. Oh, C major, of course, make sure. Maybe put it like this. <laughs> At this point I always suggest to use the legato mode so um, the phrase will adjust to the chords but the kind of shape of the phrase, the, the notes will all continue from the first one to the end. So uh, one thing we have to make sure is that these notes will be totality, totality the end. Okay, let's... Listen together with the piano, of course, the legato needs to be off and then on. So basically, sequitur is creating this kind of uh, movement underneath, which is sometimes desired. The recommendation is that as musicians we should be able to construct the correct phrase that we desire. We just shouldn't go random. But even though a little bit random, I mean this cello viola pattern was not programmed 
to follow these chords or to follow a piano part, but still is doing a good job. And of course, there will be patterns that will follow better and patterns that will not. In that case, you should edit the notes to make them fit to your composition, like we showed in other videos. Um, one thing also that we could do, we could just switch off the sequencer and, and just load a patch. Um, let's see, bum, 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 this one. Okay, let's load this off. Uh, let's just play the piano part. So basically, we can use sequitur as a normal synth or rompler or whatever you want to call it, because without the sequencer on, sequitur can be used just for its sounds. So I hope this clarifies a little bit how to use sequitur in uh, certain situations when we want to use some MIDI files which are already pre-recorded and actually were not intended originally to be used with sequitur. Thank you for watching. Bye.